Hello YouTube. This video is about putting a steering gearbox on my 1949 Chevrolet Fleetmaster Deluxe frame. I've run into a couple problems in the traditional way of putting a steering gearbox on a frame that has a straight axle and a tie rod in the back. Normally people would go out and buy a Vega box and that would mount right about here and it would be uh, uh, a good conversion. In my case that runs into a whole bunch of stuff so that's just not going to work. It really wants to be right where the engine mount is. I could mount the Vega box in front and then have front steer tie rod. Traditional hot rodders hate that. They don't like the tie rod as a front bumper. So where I have to be is in back of the axle and what I have found is that the manual steering box out of our 1965 C10 pickup truck looks like it will bolt to the frame once we remove these brackets. When you turn the steering wheel, the gear shaft turns in the right direction to turn the wheels in the right direction. This is the drag link. It runs from the pitman arm to the passenger side steering arm. This is the tie rod. It runs from the passenger side to the driver's side and ties the two of them together. This drag link right now is too long. We'll have to modify it in the future. And what we want to do is check clearance here. And it appears that we do have enough clearance, but at some point we may want to modify that oil pan. With the clearance issue discussed, what we need to do is remove these two brackets. And the first step is to uh, drill out the center with an eighth inch drill. Now what we've done is picked a drill that's slightly larger than the spot weld that's holding it in place. And what we want to do is drill out the spot weld without drilling into the frame. I think we're there. With a little damage to the frame. Now we have a place to mount the box. How are we going to locate this box on the frame? It's a heavy thing and it wants to go all over the place and we've got to be precise where we want this to go. What I did is I took a piece of plywood and I clamped it to the frame. This is not precise yet, but what I've done is clamp this piece of plywood so that it is parallel with the front spring. If you look at the gap between the spring and the piece of plywood, you see that it's even, or fairly even. And that's the center line of the car, and with that means the bracket that we build has to come out that far away from the frame. What I've done here is put a spacer underneath the drag link so we have the correct space between the spring and the drag link. Now what I'm going to do is hold the box up and engage the drag link to the pitman arm and put a bolt on. And I can let the drag link sit on the spring so that helps me position the box. We have the box set to straight forward and we have the wheels set to straight forward. We'll hold the box up against the piece of plywood, get an angle meter, and we're going to go for 20 degrees on this. The reason I'm going for 20 degrees is the original box was at 28.9. So 20 degrees is less than what was in the original vehicle, so I feel comfortable with it. So we'll go to 20 degrees. Make sure our clearance on the pitman arm is correct and mark the holes.
Now we have three holes that correspond with the box. We'll go drill these holes out and we'll trim off the end here because I only want a half inch clearance between this hole and where we weld it to the frame. So let's go drill some holes. We'll drill an eighth inch pilot hole to start with, trying to be as accurate as we can. Step up to a three eighths inch bit. And finally a seven sixteenths, which is the size of the bolt. We'll cut off the excess piece of plywood here, so we're about three quarters of an inch away from the rear hole. We'll take some 7 16 inch bolts and stick them in from the back side. And put the gearbox down on it. Fold it to the piece of wood. Take it over to the car. Set our jig in place. And we know how far back because we'll put the pitman arm onto the drag link. Set it up in place. Remove our spacer. So we do have our good space underneath the drag link. Put a clamp on the back side of the piece of plywood. With a clamp on the back and a clamp positioning the piece of wood, we'll check to make sure that we're parallel with the front spring. We'll sight down the piece of plywood and at the spring and watch the gap and see that in fact we are parallel. We'll check the angle on the box and we got 20.1. I can live with that. The next thing we should do is check the clearance on the tie rod and the drag link. And if we turn it all the way to the left, we see that we clear the oil pan but not by much and we are going to have to modify that oil pan. We've trimmed down our jig a little bit so that we can see the pieces that we need to fabricate. And we're getting more precise on our measurements here. And this plywood is a little warped, so I have to push it in just a little bit in order to be parallel with that spring. And I've cut the first piece, and it's going to fit in right here like this. And what I'll do is I'll take it over to the workbench and hot glue it in. With the hot glue gun warmed up, we'll put a little bead of glue. And stick it on there. I have the frame marked here where the end of the bracket goes. And this is what the bracket looks like now. Once it's in place, it's uh, right parallel with the spring. So we're center line. We've got the front piece glued in and I've taken the liberty of cutting the top piece. So I think it's time to glue this piece on and cut this piece off. Here we go, cutting our jig up. And with the top glued on, we can set the bracket in place. So the only surface that's not covered now is the bottom. We've got the front and the top and the back. That's, we're going to weld this to the frame right around there. What we need to do is do the bottom. And I had the bottom cut out right here. And it goes in there just like that. And we'll go glue that in and this bracket will be done. Now what we can do is take all the pieces apart and we'll cut out the metal. We have the mock-up all glued together. It fits nicely on the frame. 
This is what the, it looks like with the steering box bolted to our mock-up. And I think that's going to be just perfect. Let's see if we can break this apart. There's the first piece. There's the second piece. There's the third piece. Now we got to lay this out on a piece of metal and cut it out. Went to the metal dealer today and was able to purchase a drop. A drop is a piece of metal that's left over from a previous job and you can usually pick them up fairly cheaply. This drop has nice straight square edges on it, so I'm going to utilize those edges as much as I can. The next step is to scribe the outline of the pieces into the metal and cut it out on the bandsaw. I've clamped our first piece in place and we'll just scribe it. And we have a nice line to cut to. Here we go with our first cut. And here we are on the last cut. All done. We'll get rid of the saw marks and the edges of the pieces. Now we'll round the edges so nobody gets cut. Here we have the mock-up and the steel bracket side by side. The only difference is the mock-up has a stud in it and the steel one doesn't yet. We're going to back up and reinforce the stud. Next is sandblasting, get rid of the scale so we can weld it together. We've got the bracket clamped together and we're about to start tacking it together. Here we go on the last tack. There we go, tacking the bracket to the frame. Here's the bracket that we made, tacked to the frame, ready for us to position the steering gearbox on. Here we go, we're going to tack the steering box to the new bracket. We've cleaned up the frame with a wire brush and now we're going to weld up these uh, little holes that we created when we took the brackets off. We filled all the holes in the frame with weld. Then we ground those welds smooth. We tacked the bracket back in place for its final location. And I've drilled all these holes here. So we're ready to move on to putting sleeves in here and through bolting the mount to the frame. Let's check our angle. 20 degrees on the nose. I'll take that. What we're doing is drilling all the way through the frame. We've already drilled through the quarter inch plate and now we're into the frame and we're going to drill as straight as we can all the way through the frame. Then we're going to remove the bracket and we'll sleeve the hole so we don't crush the frame. So here we go. With a half inch hole drilled in the frame, a half inch bolt slides in real nice. But there's a couple problems. The head of the bolt is not square against the frame because it's going in at an angle. And if we tried to tighten this bolt, we would crush the frame. So what we're going to do is take some heavy wall tubing and this half inch bolt fits very nicely down inside of it. So we'll drill a hole here and through the frame on the inside and weld this tube in and that way the bolt head will have a flat surface to rest on and we can't crush the frame. So we'll take our half inch bolt out and start drilling a bigger hole. 
it's time to cut the uh, power steering box off so that we can finish the installation of the sleeves. We've cut the tubing down to size and now we can slide it in. Flush with this side. Bolt slides in. And we're not going to crush that frame. This is what it looks like on the back side. The sleeve protrudes slightly from the frame. The bolt head is squared to the tube and it's not against the frame. Now we're going to weld it all up. What we're doing here is welding the sleeve into the inside of the frame. The next step will be to remove the bracket and weld it on the other side. This is what the sleeves look like from the outside of the frame. We can slide the bolts in and see how the bolts protrude through the sleeves. And we can put the bracket on and slide them onto the sleeves and see how the sleeve is flush with the surface of the bracket. So we'll weld that in and there's no way we'll crush that. And we have a nice firm mount for the steering gear box. Here we are welding up the sleeves to the outside of the frame. We're tacking the uh, sleeves to the bracket. This bracket's not gonna come off very easily anymore if we have to take it off. And now we're tacking the bracket to the frame. Here's a good look at the sleeves protruding through the frame. And if we walk around the other side, the bracket is finished welded, but only tacked in place. And the reason we only tacked it in place is, is that should disaster arise and we have to move it, we can still get it off the frame. We'll put a new chamfer on the end of the sleeve because we lost it when we ground this flat. We'll bolt up our mock-up manual steering box, tighten the bolts down, Now I didn't use lock washers because I don't want to ruin the lock washers. I believe lock washers are a one use only piece of hardware. If you squish the uh, uh, lock washer, it loses some of its spring. So until I do the absolute final installation, I won't have lock washers on this. This is a custom length drag length that we made. If you want to see how we made it, there's a link up above. But for now, let's just insert it into the right steering knuckle and the pitman arm. And now we have steering. We go lock. To lock with no interference. Let's put some weight in here and see what it looks like then. If we turn the wheels all the way to the right, we have clearance everywhere. And if we turn the wheels to the left, we have clearance everywhere. Let's talk about the pitman arm. This is not the stock pitman arm from a 1965 C10 pickup truck. It is a pitman arm from 1964 full size or 1968 to 72 mid size GM pitman arm. It's Speedway part number 91032557. The differences between this pitman arm and the stock pitman arm is that the C10 pitman arm has a swivel in the end for a center link. Whereas this one has a hole in the end for a tie rod end. Now that hole in the tie rod end actually is too small for this tie rod end. So you have to use a reamer to ream the hole out. Because we can ream this hole out, we can put this tie rod end in either way. And I've changed my mind and I am going to put it in through the top. Because I need the clearance from here to here. 
The consequence of putting the drag link into the top of the pitman arm is that the drag link and the tie rod are no longer parallel to each other. This will introduce bump steer into our steering and we can't have that. I went and purchased a second steering arm from Pete and Jake's. We had to make some spacers to space it out from the kingpin in order to make it fit because it's supposed to be on the bottom. But the result is that the tie rod end and the drag link are now nearly parallel and very close to being parallel with the front axle. Another modification that we did was we increased the space between the frame and the spring. Now this is a gasser, so we want the front end up in the air. We hadn't planned on doing it just yet, but we found that we put, if we put two inches of height into the vehicle, we gain plenty of room between this nut and the spring. The way it was is if you turn the vehicle slightly to the left, which positioned the pitman arm directly over the spring, and we bounced the front end of the vehicle, we could get the nut to touch the spring. With the additional two inches that we put in here, that's not going to be a problem. The last project on this list is to modify the oil pan so we have more clearance. I've already ordered a bump out oil pan and that's the one we'll modify so that we don't lose any oil capacity. And that's certainly a subject of a different video. If you enjoyed this video, they'll be warned.